Hey, this is Sean Martin. I'm your minister of music here at Friendship West Baptist Church. And this is my dream. My earliest recollection of music, I was about four years old and I saw Popeye playing the piano for olive oil. And because I was a Popeye fan, you know, I ate my spinach like I was supposed to. And, uh, and I remember, you know, watching him play the piano and it made me want to, you know, dig into music. Prior to that, I would go to the church that I grew up in and I'd take all the spoons and the knives and the forks and I'd play on the back of the seats like I was playing drums, you know, and it was weird because I knew that that's what I wanted to do. But as a kid, you know, as a baby, you don't really know how to approach it. So that's kind of what sparked the interest in it. And then, you know, not long after that, I, um, I started, you know, playing the drums. And from there, I started playing the piano because my mom was like, you know, you should, you know, try to, you know, do other things. So she, you know, bought a piano for me. I was about four, about four or five years old. And I was, hor I was a horrible soccer player. I, <laughs> I played soccer when I was a kid and I was a horrible soccer player. Like I even kicked the ball in the wrong goal and my dad was just sitting there with his hands like this, you know, horrible. So he uh, got me out of soccer and I started playing uh, the piano because coincidentally, my piano teacher was the same piano teacher, was, was the same piano teacher for one of my best friends. Uh, this guy named Sam Nix. And coincidentally, the piano teacher lived on the next street over from my house. And that's pretty much how I started in piano lessons and, you know, playing. One of my biggest wishes at the time was just to be able to play a song for the choir at the church that I grew up in. You know, it was like, you know, if I could just play a song for the choir, I'd be great. But as I grew older, um, one of the wishes and dreams that I, or the wish or the dream that I had as I grew older was to be able to figure out how to make a living doing it because I realized early that I was very passionate about it. You know, I was very, very passionate about, you know, playing music and writing music and everything in between. For a long time, I battled with self-esteem. Um, you know, I, I didn't think I looked good enough to be uh, in the public's eye. Um, I battled with that for a very, very long time. I battled with fear. Um, you know, just the fear of people accepting you or being able to, you know, take you in. Um, even with, you know, recording my own jazz record, you know, one of the biggest things that I had to conquer was fear. You know, what if people don't like my music? What if people don't like, you know, the way I talk? What if people don't like the, you know, the album cover? What if people don't like, you know, this, that, and the third? You know, and then my mom would call me, and, you know, and she'd tell me all the time, you know, God is not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. You know, and once I started to take that in, you know, and, and, and really process it, it's like, you know, I can do anything. I can do anything I wanna do. Who inspired me through my journey? Mm, lots of people. Of course, Kirk Franklin. Of course, Doc, Dr. Haynes you know, inspires me so much. I'll never forget the time in, 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 uh, in Pals when he was giving us an illustration and he told us, you know, do that which makes you come alive. You know, and that kind of sparked everything. And then I met Quincy Jones uh, for the first time. The first time I ever met Quincy Jones. And he told me, he said, he said you know, do everything you want to do, then die. And, you know, and that coming from a person that's like, you know, in his 80s and still doing everything he wants to do and he's not dead yet, you know, that was really, really inspiring. Um, of course, my piano teacher, Carolyn Jones Campbell, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people really inspired me. One of my best friends in the world, RC, but he put out his record. That gave me the motivation to want to put out my record. Everything changed for me once I got past my fears and my insecurities and I realized it was time for me to do it. And I'll never forget uh, Dr. Haynes pulling me up into the pulpit after he come from one of my shows at uh, the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. 
And he said, we're gonna help you do your CD. And for me, that changed a lot of things because for one of the first times in my life, or for the first time in my life, I knew somebody other than my family had my back. I know now that anything is possible to him who believes, you know, and the cool thing about me is that I know now that, you know, with the support of my family and my friends, my church, my wife, Monica Martin, I feel invincible and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I'm going to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Sean Martin and right now I'm currently in the studio uh, working on my God-sized dream. It's weird because I've played and toured all around the world with the likes of Shaka Khan, Erica Badu, Kirk Franklin, Snarky Puppy, but now I'm here working on my God-sized dream.